Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we are swatching Bee's Knees Lacquer in Get Snailed, apparently. I love this name because I love a snail. Uh, my life advice, though, is to avoid snails in your aquarium. You will end up with way, way more snails than you bargained for. This polish was a gift with purchase for ordering in July in a certain window. I was really hoping for the sheer olive gift with purchase that I had seen, but that didn't happen. Uh, in fairness, I only saw one polish previewed as a gift with purchase, so I had no point of comparison. If you're looking at my bottle shot and thinking, oh, is that a magnetic? I did check and I did not notice any pigment moving towards the magnet. I like this in one coat. Now, it does self-level pretty well, but I didn't get it completely level. However, I think you could. Now, I didn't try to wear it in one coat because I wanted to see how it looked in a several numbers of coats. But this might honestly be my preferred number of coats for the future. To discuss this polish, we are headed straight back into my nail polish psychology. I don't know how rare this polish opinion might be, but I hate pale crellies. I hate them. I don't mind a crelly formula in a saturated color, but pale colors and whites are repulsive. I don't say this lightly. They look disgusting, to the point that I refer to them to my husband as bird vomit colors. When I started collecting, I didn't know this about myself, so I happened to buy some crellies that were on the bleached side, that turned out to be a mistake. I'm not sure what to do with them yet. I would like to rehome them, and some of them have the added complication that they smell like burning tires, and I don't want to expose anyone else to that. So if you've been watching this channel thinking, hmm, there's not really any Crellies or pastels, this is exactly why. That milkiness is not for me. On the bright side, we aren't competing for the ones you like. As regards the tire smell, I have a pet theory that this is caused by those metallic UCC flakes degrading, but I say that with only three bottles affected. All three are from different makers, so there's no connection there, but they are all those gold to green to red flakes that people love so much for the fall. The worst part is it takes about a day and a half for the smell to dissipate when you wear it, so your hands just stink. Uh, for obvious reasons, I don't love wearing those polishes anymore. So after that tangent about flakes, uh, this one does not have flakes, but I was still worried it would fall into my Ick Crellies category. Now I do have to say, I do not like the look of this polish in two coats. Um, it definitely is not helping that my coats are not even. I think if they were, I might have a, an entirely different view of this, but I did not. Um, I'm not getting the color saturation that I would want, but also my ridges on my other fingers aren't allowing the polish to have like a visual smoothness. I know you can't see those fingers, but it's that problem of seeing through too much in one place and really not at all in another. That isn't really the fault of the polish, but it still bothered me. So on to three coats we will go. I feel like this color is a B-movie Frankenstein's monster. If he was a bit anemic, maybe he was feeling a little faint and just needed to lie down for a moment. I feel like I'm trashing this polish. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not necessarily in my wheelhouse. I think this polish could help me with several types of animal that I would like to mimic. Specifically, I think of the green and black poison dart frog. It also seems quite close to a turquoise monitor lizard from New Guinea. The turquoise dwarf gecko also exists, and the turquoise browed mot mot. So I have a number of pretty animals that could become skittles using this polish. From a practical standpoint, this polish fills a gap I had in my collection. In three coats, I am rectifying the unevenness, so now I have to ask the question, do I love it? No, I'm a bit ambivalent about this polish. That is the reality of mystery polishes. Quite a while ago, I did end up with time travel is in your blood as a gift with purchase, when I didn't even realize Bee's Knees was doing that on that particular order. That polish holds a special place in my collection as one of my favorites. 
but I can't expect every mystery polish to rocket straight to my all-time favorites list. Get Snailed apparently is, once again, a pretty bright shimmer with a dingy base color. I will be keeping it, however, it might only get worn in conjunction with other polishes. Uh, I do have other polishes like this that I didn't buy to wear as a full manicure, so it won't be out of place. Another thing to note about this polish is that the base is actually sort of a minty color and the shimmer is an aqua and together they pull the polish into being a turquoise. I don't think you would get that effect if it were not milky. In three coats, I still did not reach opacity, which is fine. I don't think it was intended to be, but I think if you used a nail line obscuring base coat, you could certainly reach opacity in three with this. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, I try to swatch here with a clear base coat just so that I have a basis of knowledge for how this particular polish performs. Here we are out in the sun, and I will direct your attention to my ring finger particularly because that is my finger with the worst ridges, and you can see them very clearly, I feel, through three coats of this polish. I do have three coats on every finger. The shimmer will move from aqua into a bit of a deeper ocean blue, but it always stays in that particular area of the spectrum. What is this channel if not an engine for tangents? Uh, this could also be a Sully from Monsters Inc. polish. You'd need a purple for his spots. Then of course you would need a Mike Wazowski to go with it. I think I'd probably do Sully on one hand and Mike Wazowski on the other, but you know, I'm open to ideas. Now I'm wondering what color of green Googly Bear actually is. I need to go look at the collection. I don't think the shade is transformational for this polish, so we're just seeing it with a little less glow. It does look a little more grayish here just because of the change in lighting. I did wonder if I was getting a magenta shift in the shimmer under the trees, which is why I slow my hand down at one point, but I don't think that exists. I do think it's just a blue shimmer. It's worth mentioning that I am having a crisis of nail integrity right now. I broke a whole pile of my nails. Some just split really heavily at the ends, but others lost entire corners. So if my nail shape seems indecipherable, I agree. Weirdly, my right hand is doing better and is my dominant hand. That is often not the case. Usually it is by far worse than this one. This is the one I generally get to baby. And yet here we are. I realize the world will not crumble, but I had really hoped to keep my swatching hand looking better than this, and it just hasn't panned out. Indoors, the polish looks a little dustier and a little more blue to my eyes. It still looks turquoise overall, but maybe a little more towards aqua. Because it's not a shifty shimmer, it's not really revealing any new facets to us. So in conclusion, is this going to be my favorite polish? No, but I can definitely think of some uses for it, so I'm happy to have it for those reasons. I like to attach a little clip of an animal at the end of my videos, but I did want to warn you about this one, not because you're going to see anything shocking. The bird you're about to see is not sick. Blue jays and cardinals will lose their head feathers all at once, several times a year. Then they replace them all at once as well. When they're growing back, this is what they look like. I promise you that I am not harming them or ignoring that there's a sick animal. With that said, please enjoy a clip of my ugly bald blue jay. Sorry for the video quality, but this is my blue jay with a bald head and he's drinking out of my hummingbird feeder ant trap, which he's so funny. Look at him go. Poor darling is bald. They bald every year to replace their head feathers. He's not sick. Try something in. Off he goes again. <laughs> 